I am on a quest. I want to find out how to make software and hardware perform at their peak. I want to know how to make applications faster and more efficient. And while I'm at it, I want to have a little fun. Don't think I can do it? Just watch me. I'm Scott Moore, and this is the Performance Tour. everyone, it's time again for another episode of the Performance Tour. I'm Scott Moore and I'm here in Saratoga Springs Park in upstate New York, the end of summer, beginning of fall. I love coming here during this time because it's so relaxing and it helps me unwind and think a little while I'm on the road. What am I thinking about today? AI. You can't talk about software very long before the subject comes up and it seems like every new press release from a product says, hey, we've got our new AI solution especially generative AI. But could we actually use this technology for proactive intelligent support? We talk about digital employee experience on the show, and I'm wondering if we could use this technology on the support desk, then we would get tickets solved faster from the IT professionals, or better yet, end users could solve their own problems faster with step-by-step -step guides on an as-needed basis. So, if they could do that, what a great employee experience they'd be having, right? Let's find out if we can do that on today's show. Matt, welcome to the Performance Tour. Thanks for having me here. It's good to have you on today. So we're talking about today the use of AI and specifically generative AI in products like for digital employee experience. And so why don't you introduce yourself and what you do and how this relates to our topic today? Yeah, yeah, of course. So I'm Matt McGuire. I'm the Senior Director of Product at Lakeside Software. And so I'm leading the area of product management, uh, user experience, our tech writing teams to make sure that we're taking all of that feedback that we're getting from customers. We're looking at the market, we're listening to analysts and, and turning those into solutions for all of our customers uh, that really help to push forward the digital experience. And AI is part of that now. AI is absolutely part of it, yeah. Yeah, So, but, but everybody says that. So bef yeah. let's say before 2023, where were we in terms of being able to be proactive in IT using some technology like this? Did it even exist? So I, I think it, it existed, but we were still in a place where we were super manual in the kinds of things that we were doing, you know, where we were looking at teams that were being proactive, but you could only be proactive for those things that you can actually see in your environment. Mm -hmm. You had some idea in the back of your head, hey, I need to track this thing going on with batteries, or I need to track this thing going on uh, with, with teams or a specific application. And, and so you had that process in place where you couldn't really, you knew what you knew. You didn't know what you didn't know. Um, and then I think, you know, the, the other piece of this is really, you know, that applies also to the help desk in general. You know, it's not just the, the, the proactive piece, but it's also the reactive piece. And so with help desk uh, workers, you had folks who could look at the telemetry. They could look at what they knew to look at. And so you have this whole thing where, you know, you, you've got help desk folks. They've got five minutes before they have to escalate that ticket. If they don't know what they're looking at, they're escalating that ticket. And so you, you see a shift right instead of a shift left, mm -hmm. which is really where, where we want to be. And I think, I think that's the big difference. We, we were proactive in the sense of you had to know what you were looking for. So now we are in 2023, and I would say most people would agree this is the year of generative AI and open AI and LLMs, whatever else you want to call it. Um, but what is real in this? Because everybody says they're putting this in their product, but a lot of times it's more architecture than it is real 
things that we can get real value out of. So tr talk me through this. What is actually real and what's smoke and mirrors? Yeah, I, 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 I think you're, you're dead on a lot about the architecture, a lot of marketing. I mean, we've seen AI as a buzzword for like 10 years mm -hmm. at this point. Um, and so anybody who had some kind of algorithm that could crunch some numbers and you know, weigh a couple of attributes, all of a sudden we've got AI. But we're missing that, that learning piece. We're missing that, that ongoing, okay, I'm gonna continuously take data in, I'm gonna assess some sort of environment, and I'm gonna give you contextual evidence towards, towards some outcome. Um, and so when we think about what's smoke and mirrors or what's real, the smoke and mirrors stuff is the things that, you know, you're not getting those outcomes. You're not getting that learning. What tends to be real, all this stuff going on with like large language models that have been heavily trained and have those options to be trained further. Um, and they're things that you can interact with. They're things that you can um, adjust your outcomes through that conversation. That's real. And those, I, I love that you said it's kind of, you know, the new thing for 2023. It's so true. It's so true from a marketing standpoint, but it's also the technology has really come into a place where we can start to commoditize it um, and take advantage of it and start to use it in real applications at this point. So Matt, tell me how you take AI and integrate it into the SysTrack platform and provide immediate, immediate value into the product. Yeah, it's a good question. I think one of the, the, the great differentiators that we have is just the amount of data. Um, and, and AI feeds on data. It has to learn about something. Um, and so when you have that ability to access all of that historical data, uh, all of the, the, the sensor data that we have that are constantly pulling every 15 seconds, looking for, for these incidents, that's all data. That's all things that we can have models that are learning about. Uh, uh, and so when you have all that data, those are things that our models can look at and learn from. And so you build AI or machine learning on top of that foundation, and you're able to quickly be able to start to correlate this event to this event. Uh, these pieces of telemetry all tie together and lead themselves to some sort of root cause event. And so we start to see that immediate value just by pointing at those sensors. These three sensors going off over time. This tells us that something is occurring. And by the way, I've never seen these three sensors go off. Humans can't do that, or they can't do it without a ton of time. And, and that's kind of the story of machine learning. It's doing things that humans just cannot get done feasibly. But if you, you put a computer that's powerful enough or, or just smart enough at these problems, they can quickly start to return them. So the more data, the more gold you can mine to exactly. bring that value. Okay, yeah, great. That's a really great way to summarize it. I like that, Scott. <laughs> so, so tell me, how can a company take advantage of this today and see that kind of value? Do you have a specific use case or are you seeing anything out there right now? We've got two. We've got two fantastic use cases for this. I think the, the first, points to some of the um, AI and machine learning models that we're beginning to run across data. Um, like I said, humans cannot crunch numbers as quickly as these, these algorithms can. And so we've got a feature right now where someone could manually go through and they could say, yes, I know I'm looking for battery issues because I wanna be able to take advantage of warranty. So once I start to see this problem, I'm gonna be able to receive an alert on it and then go go remediate. But what about the stuff that you don't know about? What about the stuff that's happening under the covers? Like I said, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and so you know, a good example of this is you have malware detection software running on your computer. You expect those scans to run every weekend and it's gonna crank up that CPU while it's running the scan. From a user experience standpoint, that's great. It's the weekend, you're likely not affecting anybody. That's why you schedule it for that. However, you don't know that you should be looking daily just to check to see if, you know, is that still running Saturdays and Sundays? Mm -hmm. Instead, you have things that can run in the background with this machine learning that says, okay, I realize I expect these sensors to go off every Saturday and Sunday. Now I'm noticing this has shifted to Tuesday. All of a sudden, high CPU running on this malware detection uh, in, an, in a time that's, that it's not appropriate. It's gonna affect that, um, that user experience. I need to alert someone to this because they're not looking for it. So you have that advantage, but you can look at it from the other standpoint as well. I expect that malware uh, scanner to go through on Saturdays and Sundays, it's stopped. I don't see this sensor going off 
ever. So now we're outside the lower boundary of what I expect. That's a huge vulnerability. And so we can alert you to those things because you're not necessarily, again, you're not looking for conditions that don't exist. Mm -hmm. You're looking for conditions that do exist, if anything. Um, you know, the, the other great use case comes with all of this generative AI. Uh, that, that's really, and that's what I was saying earlier, has really become commoditized. You've got um, your junior help desk team members who have that five minutes or that seven minutes to try and resolve a ticket before they can escalate it. And you know, the, the, the cost of those resources goes up and up and up with every single escalation. One of our missions here has been that shift left. Empower those junior members of those teams to A, learn more about the environment through getting exposed to more things, resolving more issues, but also so that you can speed up that time to be able to resolve those tickets. Um, by taking advantage of generative AI, and the types of data we make available on our platform, when you tie those two things together, you've got someone who say is an L1 or an L2 that's trying to resolve an issue. And we've got that, that almost 1300 sensors that are sitting there in our environment. They can say, okay, this sensor is going off. I don't know how to resolve it today, but let me open up that generative AI, that intelligent support agent and just ask, hey, this is going off in the environment. How can I resolve this ticket? So now that L1, is resolving that ticket instead of, in, in that five minutes, that seven minutes, whatever the time is, instead of having to escalate it up and escalate it up. And they've learned something along the way. Sure. You've got happier users and you have somebody who's been exposed to something that's probably a more complex use case for them. And it allows that, uh, that L3, that desktop engineer, that person who would normally be getting that escalation up the line to work on something more fun or at least more complex at this point and really start to target those really, really hard issues. I've heard that described to me in, in a way uh, that's, that I can understand it in terms of mapping these relationships and anomalies. It's almost like with all this data you're grabbing, it's like you took a giant file cabinet and instead of everything having to be in a folder, a manila folder that we've chosen, we dump the whole thing out on the floor. Exactly. It picks it up, but it finds relationships that you would have never put, and it puts it in other folders that you may have never put it into, and that's how it finds. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely, that's, that's where we get to root cause correlation. We're saying, okay, we are seeing these three conditions. Now, a, a super advanced uh, uh, IT team member is going to be able to put together those three things. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm seeing high CPU, I'm seeing high interrupts, I'm seeing that somebody hasn't restarted their computer in some time. There's probably driver updates sitting out there that are causing all of these issues. You know, you, you can look at that as a potential scenario, but why not be able to point everyone in that IT stack right. at that problem by correlating these things together and taking advantage of, again, these, these this massive amount of information that these models are trained on to point them at this issue. Exactly. Yeah. So let's take a look into the future. Tell me what your thoughts are about where we go from here in the next 24 to 36 months with the use of AI. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, so much we can do with that rich data when we're looking across the estate. And that's really where we are today. You, what is happening in the broader sense? What's happening with 10% of my, machine, my machines? Where's the smoke? within the estate before there's a fire that I can proactively address. I think the, the, the real improvements with this, the real advances, the real changes for the end user specifically are gonna come when this all happens on the device itself. Mm -hmm. When we're sitting there and, and this is a huge boon, it's a boon for the end users, it's a boon for, for those reactive team members, the ones who are sitting on the help desk and trying to resolve tickets, to be able to have these models running on the devices themselves and be able to look at that, again, that rich historical data. There's three years of data sitting in that agent that these, these uh, uh, models can look at, learn from, and then build, you know, build out their, their, uh, their expectations from. And so once that's on the device, someone calls in with an issue, you've got a help desk team member who's in there looking at Resolve, which is that, that big, like it's the black box. It's every piece of data about that machine in real time or historically and being able to look at it. And now you have that model, it's pinpointing. Here's, you know, you're looking at a five minute time. Here's three things that were out of line at that time. Here's where you start your investigation. 
because I can tell that these things shouldn't have been happening. Do you think though within 36 months from now, we have the ability to trust the AI to go ahead and do it for us? So that's an interesting question. Um, I do. I, well, I think we, we're still in a space where we're applying critical thinking to that. Right. We're not gonna remove the human element from any of these things. You need humans to continue to monitor the training of these, you need them to help drive the prompts. If you look at anything going on in the news or, or in literature around AI, these are really, really good models. They're strong, they give good responses, but they're still not to be 100% trusted. Uh, you look at even what Microsoft says for the folks who are using their generative AI models. Good, strong model, but you need to go and you need to check the responses. You need to make sure that it's giving you accurate data. You need to, to do the sniff test, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so I think there's, there's always gonna be a space where that L1, that L2 is gonna have to have some knowledge to say, yes, it's, it's telling me I should be looking in the right area. Um, I have the critical thinking skills to be able to go through and say, yeah, yeah, this makes sense to me before they're jumping ahead. We're not gonna, we are not going to be in a space where we're gonna allow these models to then run remediations on their own without getting the check out. Thank you so much for spending some time with me Thanks today. Me. So you awesome. know what we gotta do now, what the most important question is, cause I'm, you know, I'm not used to this area, is where's the best barbecue at? So. AI for intelligent, proactive IT. That's the future of the support desk. It's all about boosting that digital employee experience so companies can achieve their business goals faster. It'll be interesting to see where all this goes in the future. For this episode of the Performance Tour, I'm Scott Moore. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you out on the road. Now, let's look into our crystal balls. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. Let's do, <laughs> let's do take two. That didn't come out right. <laughs>